gentlemen. Folks, I am excited to say that my first guest tonight is Minnesota governor and vice presidential candidate Tim Walz. Unfortunately, there you go. Unfortunately, Governor Walls could not come to the Ed Sullivan Theater due to the fact that this building is not a swing state. <laughs> but I was able to meet up with the governor recently at a coffee shop in suburban Philadelphia. Governor, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, now, we are uh, here in the Johnson Hall Coffee House in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Why, why is it so important for you to be here? Well, we're traveling to the, the battleground states these last few days, and I think Bucks County has always been uh, kind of that, uh, uh, that quintessential purple district in the suburbs of Philly. Uh, and we're out here uh, going to talk to union members, uh, going to uh, make the case to some folks that, uh, that we've got a better way forward. Now, I'm having coffee. I understand your drink of choice is Diet Mountain Dew. It is. Can I do you? Can I do you for? <laughs> yes, you can. Can I get Philly up there? Real. There you go. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, oh, come on. My, this is my a wife, network show. We can afford. My wife diet says Mountain it doesn't Dew. look very uh, adult to do this, but no. it's a morning drink. Okay, let's talk campaign. We're at the end of the campaign, maybe the beginning of the administration, but we know it's the end of the campaign. Highs and lows. Hi, meeting the American people, and as a personal one, uh, seeing my former students, a lot of them come back across the country. I'll, I'll see them at events all over, and they'll come back. That for kind of my Mr. Holland's opus. Uh, it's nice. Would you like Richard Dreyfuss to play you in the movie? Yeah, that would be not. Yeah, that would be. The Lows? <laughs> Lows? Uh, gain weight during this, I guess, and uh, <laughs> so that might be the one. But I assume uh, no. going to a lot of diners doesn't help. No, there's there's no lows in doing this. Okay. Not even sharing the stage with J.D. Vance. Okay, that was not great. You're right. On that. So, okay. The United States venerates their veterans, but such a small percentage of the country actually serves. We know what the country gets from the service of people like you who uh, wore the uniform proudly for so many years. What do the people in uniform get that the rest of us who haven't served don't understand? Yeah, that's a, and, and that is a great way to frame it. I always said that, that I got far more out of it than they did. That, that sense of service and camaraderie, uh, the sense of, uh, sense of something bigger than yourself. It's a big reason I'm a big national service guy. This is, this is you uh, when you first entered the uh, Army a National child. Guard, right? Uh, yeah, there 17. You go. 17. Yeah. So your dad personally drove you he did. to the recruiting station at 17. What had you done that made him want you out of the house so badly? <laughs> I think about that now. How good was that summer for them? Throughout the campaign, uh, we've gotten to know you and your family. Uh, you and your wife, uh, uh, Gwen, yes. have been married for 30 years. 30 years. There you go. Here's, I think we have a lovely, lovely photo. There you are. There, oh, right there. Oh, look at that. When you met, when you guys met, who made the first move? I, I think I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. My wife and I had a classroom that was divided with a temporary divider that you could hear both sides of because we didn't have enough room in our school. It was an old band room. She was teaching English on one side. I was teaching geography on the other. And uh, she could hear a lot about it. And she said, I'm sure that's a very interesting topic, Mr. Walls, but uh, we're trying to conjugate <laughs> verbs over here. That's how you met? That's how we met. As a Minnesotan, would you call your wife a hot dish? <laughs> No, I, I would not call her a hot dish, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy. It's a compliment. It's a compliment. Yes, I've never heard it used in that context, wow. though, because wow. hot dish are pretty sacred. I got to compliment your Midwestern uh, dad insult skills, okay? We got, uh, we got jackwad, we got knucklehead, and my favorite, skipping like a dip. <laughs> um, where, does, where do you think the poetry comes from Minnesotans? Obviously, you, Dylan. We, we all know we have word, yeah. wordsmiths out yeah. there. Yeah, well, and, and I do think the, the part of Minnesota is not to, like, insult people or bully people. I said, in, I think in each one of those cases, I was kind of making an observation about them, but it's, uh, there's a fine line between <laughs> I'm not insulting you. I'm making an observation. I'm making an observation about your behavior. That's the nice, that's behavior. Minnesota nice you know, way of saying I'm insulting somebody. this is the teacher in me. I'm, I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with your behavior. Exactly. So that was that's very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. Um, okay, you've been on the trail for three months. Um, this is, a, this is a shot of you when it started. <laughs> this, is, this is what you look like at the beginning of the campaign. Um, you okay? You feeling awesome. all right? You feeling all right? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, why do you think this is still so close? Does that, does that mystify you? No, it disappoints me, I think, because I think that the choice is so stark. But it's not surprising. The country's really divided. There's been a group of people out there who figured that out. And I think they've done a wonderful job of making people think it doesn't matter. Everybody's the same. And in this case, you've got the Constitution versus 
not in the Constitution. You've got reproductive rights versus I don't care if you like it or not, I'll tell you what to do from Donald mm -hmm. Trump. In closing with insulting people, I know we're sitting in Pennsylvania, there's, there's 500,000 Puerto Ricans here. Um, and uh, Puerto Ricans, as, as all Americans, are very proud of where they come from. Exactly. Have you ever been to a Puerto Rican Day parade? So They're yeah. very into Puerto Rico. They're very into it. I as well that. they should. The internet has dubbed you America's dad. People uh, call me that too. What's your guilty pleasure when you're, when you're like looking for something to relax you? Like, because I love, like, I like watching a metal lathing, like, you know, oh, computer yeah. designed metal lathing or yeah. uh, You ever seen them clean a rug? Oh, yeah, yeah. I suspect <laughs> that those rugs aren't as dirty naturally. Like, they dirty them up a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, because it, it's filthy. It's and you're wondering how people Where did they like keep that? this yeah, rug? I exactly, agree. in a junkyard? How about restoration videos where they take, like, an old tool or something like that? Yeah. Okay, I got one, I got one little video for you here. I think you might enjoy this if, if you're the man I think you are. This is, uh, this is restoration of an old lighter, old World War II lighter. Yeah, so, these are good when they do this. Yeah, like they have to blow torch parts of it just to get a I've screw I've seen them out. do this with like Tonka trucks. And, they and restore them, them just beautifully. Yeah. Now it's sandblasting. That is just smoothing out the wrinkles of your See, brain. That's, oh my God. Oh, that's a on. table lighter then. Yeah, look at that. Now light it. Come on. Oh. <sighs> my soul is a still ship on a calm sea. Yeah, that was yeah. nice. Don't do drugs, kids. Watch uh, restoration videos. He's right. That's better than carpets, I'll give you that. Okay. I want to understand the policies of a future Harris Walls administration. Please explain what an opportunity economy is, but using only car repair metaphors. Okay. Um, so your car's running a little rough. It's still running. Yeah. But there's things that you could do. And now if it's an older vehicle, you could get a carburetor clean on it. You mm -hmm. could invest the money into a really important piece, say the carburetor being the middle class. You put a little investment into that carburetor, the entire vehicle runs better. That it's brings oxygen into the entire system. Yes. So you invest in the middle class. Now everybody's thinking, oh, what's the carburetor? What about you know the tires? They're really important. The engine, all those pieces are really important too. But without the carburetor, I'll make the case the middle class makes everything else work. You were a assistant football coach, a defensive was. coordinator. Would you care to take me on a game of paper football? Lost an entire semester of uh, algebra as a ninth grader playing this game, so mm -hmm. you know what you're on. All right. You a slide guy to, are you a slide guy or are you just simply on? Oh, uh, slide guy to see like who starts? A slide guy for the points, you know, that's a six pointer. No, oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. If it's a hanger. You have to be able to do yeah, that. There, you have to be able to do that. What are you, what are you, I'm an American. Right. Look, I will admit it. not how to play paper it, I football? All right. I, yeah, okay, I right. know I'm in the mainstream right, are you, media. Are you kicking to start? Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, this point is who goes first, right? Your All right, choice. Me. You receive, so you want me to slide? You, dude, it's up to you. You get to pick. That's the coin to toss. Do you receive? I'm not deferring. I'm taking the ball. Okay, okay. Let's go. All right. So, so. Here we go. All right. All right. No, no, no. no now you, no, you tap it from there. Oh. You have to tap it from there. So it's a tap? It's a, well, we do the you tap. Do so wherever it is, really, you tap is this from like there. regional? So In South Carolina, okay. you tap. All right. That's harder. Yeah. This is like hey. a new skill. All right, I get it. We were Life throwers. is hard, we Governor. We were throwers. Is, are you, th you think this is hard? Try being vice president. You're right, you're right. All right, all right, I'm in. What, what chance do we have to rebuild the carburetor of the middle class if you think this is hard, sir? Okay, I'm ready. That's easy. You overpowering. You go You're overpowering it. Go ahead. That was in it. Oh, <laughs> it's in. Okay, let's go. Let's go for the next point. Here we go. You might want to close your eyes. <laughs> Oh! It's good. It's good. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. So well, I didn't know. Yeah. You are the renaissance. Coach, this is the night before the election, okay? By the time we get to this part of the interview, it's already midnight. People are already voting someplace in the We're United getting States. Votes. Okay? So let's, let's bring it in, Coach, for one final pep talk to the voters out there who, who, who maybe haven't made up their mind. And if you yep. could give that pep talk using as many of these sports cliches as possible, that would be great. All right, folks. Time to dig down deep. Um, we know that we're in the final two minutes of this game. We're gonna give 110%. Uh, we know we have to leave it on the field uh, because look, democracy's at stake here. We have an opportunity to, uh, to bring this country together. There's no I in country. Um, that was a good one. That's there. true, there's no that I in country. That was a good one. I didn't, I'm sorry, I gotta hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so look, we're gonna win this thing. 
we've got the best candidate. We got the best quarterback out there in Kamala Harris. Uh, we got the best game plan. We know their game plan of Project 2025 isn't going to be good for any of us. And so, uh, creating an opportunity economy, we're going to put the ball over the goal line. We're going to win this thing here in the final minute, and then we're going to celebrate come Wednesday morning with uh, with our quarterback, President Harris. And we have the meats. I missed that. One. <laughs> I missed that. Governor, thank you so much for uh, yeah. taking the time. I hope you get to talk again soon at the Naval Observatory. Thank you. Governor Tim Walls, everybody. We'll be right back. Go vote!